Hi, this is Pai Mazzardi of Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, council right to buy. So this is where tenants are looking to buy their council homes. It could be flats or houses. Uh, and we're getting a lot more inquiries around this. And it's quite a, um, uh, it's quite a big topic, really. Um, it's quite a specialist because, um, uh, because of the property types, the applicant background, and the actual the way the scheme works. So let's talk about the scheme uh, briefly. Uh, essentially, what it happens is when, when the council can write to you and can offer you a right to buy sort of property. Now, based on that, what they will do is they'll send their own valuers around and they will value the property. In my experience, generally, they value the property maybe 15 to 20% under the market value of a normal non council owned property. Now, um, off that price, let's just say the council comes in and values the property at three hundred thousand um, pounds. They will then give you a discount, and um, that discount is really very much depending on how long you've been a tenant for. Um, the maximum I think in, around, in London is around one hundred eight thousand pounds. Other places, you know, it, it could be less. So. What happens is, so at that time, once the valuation is, is come in, they will give you a value of the property and they'll also give you the discounted value. Um, now, the beauty of right to buy uh, and how it works is essentially you can use that discount as your deposit. So you could use that 100,000, 108,000, 70,000, whatever the discount is as your deposit. So you don't necessarily need to put any money on top. You can buy the property 100% with the discount and then you can get the mortgage. So many of the mortgage lenders out there, that will, they will take the 100% of that discount as the deposit. Um, so the remainder you'll have to get a mortgage on. The mortgage itself is actually very, very similar to a normal traditional mortgage. So, um, you know, the affordability generally works the same way. Um, it's just getting a mortgage. But um, the, the bit that they, they have to get right is essentially the the discount part and, and making sure the lender will actually offer right to buys and not all lenders offer right to buy mortgages so let's so that's the sort of overview of how right to buy i suppose how you get your discount and how lenders review it but the the more uh, interesting part really is when 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 you're looking to do a, a right to buy on different types of property so when you're doing a right to buy mortgage there are some things that you've got to consider um, and, and, and as a broker we consider it one, um, the type of property. Now, uh, if you're in a flat to a house, there's big differences between the two. So generally, lenders like to lend more on houses, okay? Or it's more straightforward to, to, to get right to buy on houses. So um, the, the first thing you gotta look at is, is it a house or is it a flat, okay? Now let's go through uh, the scenarios. Um, traditionally, with a lot of ex-local authority flats or flats that have been built by local authorities and some of them were non-standard construction types what that means is they could be concrete blocks for example rather than bricks they could have steel frames there'll be non-standard construction types where a lot of the lenders will simply not lend on it so very important when you're speaking to the council and you're doing your valuation report you identify you know what type of construction type it is okay um, it, you know, you can see yourself, is it made out of bricks or is it concrete? If it's a concrete, what type of concrete is it? And it will state that in the in the valuation report. So that's really important. Non-standard construction types are quite common within ex local authority flats. So identifying that right at the start is very important because not all lenders will lend on it. In fact, not many lenders lend on it. Two, is it a flat or a house? If it's a house, um, pretty straightforward to deal with. Uh, as long as it's standard construction, we can we can sort of maneuver around the lending criteria. If it's a flat, things become a little bit more um, difficult or challenging. Um, one of the questions that lenders will ask, and a lot of lenders have got criteria around, is how many floors are there? So generally, typically, if it's got four or five floors, not an issue. Anything over that, again, it needs to be highlighted to the broker, or the broker should ask you the question, and then we have to go through various lender criteria. So some lenders don't have a criteria around number of floors. Some lenders will say no more than five or six. Some lenders will say if it's got five floors, it must have a lift on there. So those are the rules that the broker will need to identify, have a discussion with the client and um, the lender to make sure it fits criteria. One other point which is really important and a lot of people don't know about is the deck access rule. Now what deck access is, is um, um, when you go up a flat, a block of flats, let's go and you go on floor one, 
uh, you see a great big long corridor. And on the left hand side or right hand side, there could be houses or there could be um, doors. So number one, number two, number three, number four, and you're walking down the corridor outside. Um, that's called a deck access. Now, believe it or not, not a lot of lenders lend on deck access and they've got rules around it. There are historical rules essentially around, um, you know, resale values. They think it's not, uh, it's not desirable. Um, so a lot of lenders don't lend on them. So it's really important we identify myself and the client and, and, and the lender whether they'll lend on deck access and what rules they've got around deck access. So something as small as that will mean whether the application will go through or not. So it's important. The amount of times I get calls from applicants who say, oh, we've gone to such and such lender direct and they don't do, you know, the surveyor's gone through and they've said no because it's got deck access. They don't lend on deck access. Well, we could have told you that right at the start. So deck access is very, very important. Um, uh, there are a number of lenders that will lend on them. There are a number of lenders that are ambiguous around the criteria. So they don't actually tell you whether they lend or they don't lend. They'll just say subject to value as comments, which is the worst thing you can have because it's uncertainty for, for the applicant. Um, so we move away for uh, the deck access. Then you've got, uh, obviously, you've got the construction type. Um, if it's, you know, if it's made out of bricks and it's four or five stories, no problem, uh, whether it's got deck access or not. If it's a tower block, then it becomes more difficult. Then we have to look at, have they lent in that block in the past? And there are ways we can try to find out. Um, we'll look at the building. I always look at it. So I look at it on Google and I'll have a look and see um, if it's one that we think is lend lendable by lenders. Some of those big, really big tower, tower blocks, you know, 20, 30 stories, some lenders will simply not lend on them. And the lenders that will lend on them you're all of a sudden going from a normal right to buy sort of mortgage lender, you know, high street lender who will give you, a, I don't know, a five year fixed under 2%. All of a sudden to those tower blocks, you're looking at lenders that will only do it at 6% or 7%. So it's a big leap. So unless you're getting a big discount and it's worth it for yourselves, um, some people just look at it and say, Pime, do you know what? I can't, I can't, want, you know, I can't justify paying that much money uh, and be in a position where I know lenders will not lend on this thing. So I'm going to be stuck with a 6-7% rate for the duration of the mortgage. It's, not, it's, too, it's a risk too much that I'm not willing to take, which is fair enough. But you've got to understand what the, what the issues are. Now, there are some lenders that will still lend on those type of blocks, but you know, they're not going to be the high street guys, and you're not going to get the 1% or 2% rates. Sometimes you may do. It just really depends on each property. Um, the location is so important, you know. Um, so again, it's discussing it with a broker uh, who understands right to buys, who understand these questions. So some of these questions that I've got, if a broker hasn't, hasn't come, come across deck access before or does not know the sort of um, the rules around right to buys, we'll get it wrong. Um, another one, which is, I tend to stay away from lenders who've got this rule, but the rule is occupancy levels. So some lenders will stipulate that, um, you know, you must have, uh, more than 50% owner occupiers within a block. What that essentially means is 50% of the block must be owned by people who've done a right to buy or owned their own properties. Um, now, how are you going to know that? It's very difficult. If it's a small block, fine, you, you might know this, but um, it becomes a little bit more difficult around that without doing land registry searches and finding off valuers or, or making an application to a lender. So what I like to do is I like to stay away from lenders who've got rules like that and go with traditional lenders that don't, or have got a history of approving right to buys within within the blocks. And again, it comes down to experience on that one. But I have come across a number of lenders that have got rules, sometimes for affordability reasons or for um, for credit profile reasons. We've had to go with a lender that's got rules like that. So um, it's it's not straightforward. Um, then we stay away from. So these are the rules around flats. Okay. Your traditional mortgage lending rules then kick in. So, you know, income multiples or affordability. Now, a lot of the lenders moved away from income multiples, so four times your income, five times your income. They now work on an affordability basis. So, um, again, we'll have to use those traditional affordability rules around this. Um, we've got, obviously, lenders that I've got they're good with if you've got a number of debts, for example, if you've got loans, existing loans, they're good with commitments. We've got other lenders that are good with income multiples. You've got other lenders that are good with 
employment types, you know, if you're self-employed, a lot of people are now self-employed. So we've got lenders that will go off last year's accounts or net profits on a right to buy, which is really, really beneficial because a lot of the lenders, what they do is they take an average of the last two years income. Now, if you're self-employed, you want to go buy last year's income because you had a good year and you think now it's a good time to buy the right to buy, that's a good solution for you. So we've got, I think we've got over 32 lenders that are doing right to buy mortgages. And, you know, they're all different spectrums of rates and, and fee structures and, 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 and product types. Um, traditionally, most, most of the right to buy deals that we do are based on a five year fixed. Um, because you've got the five-year um, rule, uh, where if you if you sell the property uh, within that five years, you've got to uh, you've got to give some of the money back to the council. So um, we traditionally just take a five-year fixed out for clients, and most of them are, are not looking to move on. Um, another question that I get quite a lot is, um, my mother's on the right to buy papers, but she hasn't got the affordability. Can I can I go on the you know can I go on the mortgage? Well, so no. You basically have to be on the right to my papers to be able to get a mortgage. The difficulty with that is a lot of people, and I'm doing a lot of mortgages on this. Where uh, let's just say you want to buy it with your parents, okay? You're the you're the earner. Your parents are necessarily are, are coming up to retirement. A lot of the lenders will work off the oldest applicant's age for for an application, which means you know if your parent is sixty years. It's going to be a 10-year mortgage. Well, 10-year mortgage, one, you might not have the affordability, and two, your monthly payments are going to be ridiculously high. So we've got lenders that will ignore the oldest applicant's age on right to buy. It's not many, but we have got some solutions on that, and that's really important. And they will allow up to three or four applicants on, on a right to buy, as long as you're on the right to buy papers. So really important around that. There are so There's so much more around right to buys, but I thought I'd just give you an insight in some of the major points with right to buy mortgages. Uh, as always, we're here at Niche Advice to help you. Um, just literally contact us at uh, nicheadvice.co.uk or 0207 993 2044. Thank you so much. I hope you found the video useful. One more important thing I have to mention with all of these videos and everything that we've got on our website and, and on the YouTube channels is getting a mortgage is a serious thing, okay? If you fail uh, to keep up your repayments uh, on your mortgage, you could be in danger of getting repossessed. So it's really, really important that you think about a mortgage as a long-term thing, okay? It's not for one year, it's not for two years. You may have affordability now, you may not have it later on. So it's really, really important you think about getting a mortgage is a very serious thing. You wanna make sure you keep the property that you're buying. If you do find yourself in difficulty, the first point of course should be to contact your existing lender, to see what they can do for you, ask for help. There are professional advisors that could help you around this thing because it's really important you keep on top of things rather than sort of putting things away and, and, and putting them in the background because uh, uh, like I said, it's your livelihood, it's your roof over your head. So please, please try to keep up repayments with your mortgage. That should be all of our goals. Thank you.